I'm going to show you how to replace your wheel cylinder on your car using hand tools and an impact to get the lug nuts off. It's very simple. I'm going to do it this method without removing the brake shoes. In this case, removing the brake shoes would be ideal in this case because my brake shoes are very worn out, but I'm going to remove it without removing my brake shoes just because I'm going to do that on a later date. So here's the wheel cylinder. This is the part, usually these boots get worn out and they start to leak out, or they'll leak out right where the shaft ends. A couple of days ago, I decided I'm going to try and break everything free, and we'll play that right now. On the land turd at right now, we have another, another problem. We've got this drum brake here that's extremely old, and it's original, as weird as that sounds. We have this drum brake. Well, as I was doing some simple diagnosis, we have some wet line in the back. In this case, I'm going to pop the drum off. Yeah, okay, okay, that's not a good sign. Well, actually, I could use that in there. <laughs> Ooh, that's not a good sign either. Check the inside of the drum here. Doesn't look too bad but looks like we have a leaking wheel cylinder. And my shoes are almost gone. Well, using this, I'm going to see where it's leaking from. Looks like we have it leaking right there. Oh yeah, that's leaking, for sure. For sure, oh yeah a 10 millimeter wrench and see if I can just see what can be broken free. Obviously I broke this one free. So you want to just give it like light. The way I say is whenever I do brake lines of any kind, I like to give it a couple of taps with my hand to see if it'll move at all. If it moves, then I can give it a little harder tap, but because these are brake lines, and I want to avoid having to replace all of it at once. I just give it a couple of light taps to see, kind of like an impact would, and see if I can loosen it up. So we got two of those loosened up. Using a 10 millimeter line wrench, just gonna give it a couple of taps. Kind of like that, just to see if it'll move. And if it does move, since this is a brass fitting typical, ooh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, we on the roll. It looks like, ooh, ooh. And it doesn't look like that the line is following along with it at all. So that means there's a good chance I'll be able to remove this rusty brake line and not have to replace it. Now, if the whole line is rusty, well, yeah, this is fine. I can probably take some light sandpaper or some sort of paper to it and clean it up a little bit without damaging the line. So then at least I can coat it. But it looks like that this this brake line can be removed without a problem. Yep, and I'm not gonna fiddle with it because I don't have brake shoes at the moment. But before I work on it, I wanna make sure everything comes free. As you can see, right along here, the boot is worn out and it just broke and started leaking fluid all over my shoes. So, when your shoes get drenched in brake fluid, it is best recommended and it is more recommended and highly beneficial to replace everything. Start by lifting up the vehicle. And placing some jack stands underneath. Now I'm gonna lower the vehicle onto the jack stands. Gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Remove the hubcap from the car. Using a 20 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the lug nuts. This can easily be done with a breaker bar and a half inch drive wrench. Now I'm gonna remove the tire. Exposed, there's the drum brake. 
With the drum exposed, I can take and remove the drum using this I actually don't know what thread pitch is. I could measure it, but I'm not going to. It's the only one. Find a thread pitch that actually threads in easily and it'll work, usually. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this, and you heard that clunk. Well, that's the brake drum being removed from the hub. Okay, give it a couple more turns. Once we get in here, I'm gonna put some gloves on because you do not want this stuff on your hands. especially the brake fluid. Using the screw as leverage, and I wish rotors had these. I wish, honestly, rotors had those. It would make life so much easier. If you've ever done a Mazda 3, it's like hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and getting nowhere. Now we're gonna remove this to expose the drum. Using a 10 millimeter open end flare nut line wrench, I'm going to Loosen the brake line just a bit. Giving it some couple taps to see if it'll come free. Okay. So it doesn't look like it's binding on anything. I'm gonna loosen up the wheel cylinder bolts, giving it a couple of taps. Okay. There's one. Okay, there's two loosened. Okay, everything is loosened on the back side. Being sure to put a catch pan down. I'm gonna remove the line. From the wheel cylinder. one quarter turn at a time. If you have brake fluid in this line, you're going to want to make sure there is brake fluid in the line. There we go. As you can probably see, there is brake fluid leaking out. Brake line is disconnected. Move the bolts holding the wheel cylinder in place. One You don't want to leave that brake line hanging for too long because brake fluid is hydroscopic. It does attract moisture. So you want to do this in one go and not a daily proceed, especially with rusted brake lines. There's number two. See the brake line dripping fluid out? Using a flathead screwdriver, I'm going to spin this. It should expand it. Okay, now that we're off of it a little bit, we can try and remove the wheel cylinder. Now, these can be stuck on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and lightly pry up against it first to see if I can move it and break it free. Wow, look how rusted that was. Goodness gracious. But now that it's out, finally, we wanna make sure that we don't get anything into the flared fitting, but we do wanna clean up around here. Using a small wire brush where the mating surface is, I'm gonna just give it a nice little brush before putting the new one in. with a catch pan on the bottom. Be careful when using brake clean. You do not want to inhale any of the, the brake deposits as it may contain asbestos. So you want to do that. Wear gloves, stay as far back as possible, and wear a mask usually. There we go. And you can see all the deposits falling.
All right. We're gonna compare the new part to the old part to make sure that they match. You don't wanna put mismatched parts on a car. We have three holes, two in line. And if you wanted to go in depth with this, you can do some dial measurements with it. So dial indicator measurements. So we have three holes and the brake bleeder right there. So all in identical positions, as well as the front, identical. Sides look the same. So let's install it on the car. Before installing it on the car, I'm going to remove the new brake bleeder. My preference is I don't like to install with them on, so I'm just gonna take that eight millimeter and remove it. All right, we are ready to install. Back at the car, we can bring this back down. Give it a little bit of brake clean. Just like that. Take this rubber shipping, keep contaminants out. Take that rubber shipping piece out and drop it on the ground. And I'm gonna set the wheel cylinder back in. Note that if these, these don't line up, what do I do? They don't line up. Well, easy solution. Since I'm gonna be dropping it from the top down, I can take a flathead screwdriver and you wanna make sure that you push in once or twice. You don't wanna play with it, but you wanna push in once or twice to make sure everything moves. Now I'm gonna turn this one so it's facing 90 degrees. And I can just try and work it in there. On the back side, I'm gonna reinstall the two 10 millimeters. And I'm not gonna tighten them down at all because we want this to move. Now I'm going to put the brake fitting back in to the wheel cylinder. You wanna be very careful when you do this because you don't wanna th cross thread any, any of those. See if it goes in smoothly. Okay, we're not going in smoothly. One of the most crucial parts, you wanna just take your time when lining up all of this. In this case, I'm going to remove those two 10 mils I put in. Right, now that the fitting is in, we can reinstall those two 10 millimeter bolts into the wheel cylinder. Okay, there's one of them. Okay, there's the second one. And I can hand tighten them. Grabbing the brake bleeder, I'm going to thread that in. and allow it to gravity bleed a little bit. Okay, just let that sit open. Tighten this line to the wheel cylinder. You want hair tied back, no matter what, when you're working on a car. Sadly, I could not find my hat this morning, so I cannot do that. Okay, we're snug. Now I'm gonna tighten those two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the wheel cylinder. And remember, these are 10 millimeter bolts. You don't wanna over tighten them, so I'm just gonna give them just like a couple of taps with the wrench and they should be pretty snug. It's really hard to get a actual socket wrench in here. So that's the best I can do. There we go. Take that 10 millimeter again and now I can snug it up, making sure that this line does not get 
pulled along with it. There we go. Now we can come back to the front. Now to the front side with the new wheel cylinder installed. Hair can get into any of this and if this was spinning it could pull me straight down. I'm going to, I put a hat on because that was incredibly dangerous. There's a tensioner back here, a little rod that moves. Let's see if I can bring you closer to take a look. There's a little rod back here, I don't know if you can see it, right there, that if you push down, if you hear it, it's relieving tension on here, on the wheel adjuster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one flat head to hold the rod down and use another flat head screwdriver or drum brake adjusting tool to re-bring this back in. Holding, oops, holding one side down, instead of going one way, I'm gonna go the opposite. That is going the wrong way, I just wanna make sure. So I'm gonna hold that down. You want to be careful not to wreck the teeth. That is a major concern when you do this. You do not want to wreck the teeth. So if there's too much tension on here, do not continue. You wreck the teeth, you can't, some of these cars, you can't get another adjuster. And I know because I can't get another adjuster for this car. So I have to take extra care and caution when working on the wheel cylinder or the, even the adjusting. So any of these things, I would have to take extra care. Now I could convert it to a disc brake conversion like most people do, but in this case, I do not want to because the car is sadly too old to do and I would end up having to find another body and I would be using the parts from this car. Okay, let's test see. Let's test fit the drum. See if I can even get the drum on, if I can. Nope, it's still too far out so far. Okay, test fit the drum. Okay, it looks like we're almost on. Now before I bleed the brakes, I'm going to adjust the wheel cylinder to the drum. First, I'm going to stand back, clean the drum off. Yes, I did switch gloves. Okay. Let everything drain out. Okay, make sure everything's intact. And we're going to make sure it's adjusted just so it barely touches. Now that's the rust from the rotor, the drum. Okay, as you can tell, we're way too loose anyways. Now that everything's cleaned off, we're gonna adjust everything accordingly. Yeah, that's just the drum, as you can hear. So it's way too loose. What we're gonna do, we're gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a couple of threads. To, and this is just trial and error. You just gotta take your time with it. There we go. Finish bleeding the brakes. So now I'm going to, I forgot to film it. I had somebody else helping me with it. It was a two person job instead of one. So we're gonna check the min and max lines. And as you can see right here, 
the max line is right here. We want to fill it up to that point with dot three brake fluid. It usually says on the top, use only dot three or dot four brake fluid from container. And you never want to use an open one of these because this is hydroscopic and it attracts moisture. Carefully, I'm going to slowly fill it up to the max line. Okay, there we go. Stick the lid on it quickly and then wipe off the contaminant before it starts dripping down. And then using some Dawn dish soap to neutralize it a little bit. Just gonna give it a little bit of Dawn dish soap so it doesn't rust out anything. There we go. Because brake fluid eats away paint. When you're bleeding the brakes, there's two ways you can do it. And the way that I did it was I had somebody inside the car well, I told them to open, push the brake down three times while I cracked the valve open after waiting for it to dry bleed or drip bleed or gravity bleed, however you want to say it. Many people say it differently. But after having him hold the brake pedal down, I opened it up and then I watched to see, make sure there was no air bubbles and then I closed it back up. We did this probably four or five times and then we also have to repeat it for the other side because when you replace one side of the rear or one side of the front, you have to bleed both sides of the front or both side, sorry, both of the front or both of the rear. Now the other way you can do it is take two bottles of dot three, dot four brake fluid, stick the hose into the bottle, and I was gonna show that, but I didn't have the ability to. You would leave it open, you would go into the car, you would pump the brakes with the fluid going into the bottle, pushing the air bubbles out and then sucking back new fluid. That works too. Either or, as long as you don't have air bubbles inside of your brakes, well, that's the best part. Now we're gonna reinstall the tires and take this out on a test drive. And make sure when you start the car and you drive, you always pump the brakes before you put it in gear. Remove each jack stand. Lower the car so just the wheels are barely touching. Just like that. I'm going to torque the lug nuts down in a star pattern. Now I'm going to torque this side down in a star pattern as well. Never pull up towards against you, always push down. Put the hubcap on. Okay. Let's go take it for a test drive.